Jean Greer here at Stylish Fireplaces with some help on how to operate your Dimplex Ignite XLF Linear Electric Fireplace. The first thing you should do is find your owner's manual. So the owner's manual is going to come with the fireplace and inside you're going to find instructions on how to operate the fireplace. If you can't find that, go to our website stylishfireplaces.ca, look up the model you have and then look at the installation tab. That's where we put all of the owner's manuals so you can download it at your leisure and you'll always have that available to you. There's lots of good information in the owner's manual. When it comes to operation, it's going to tell you all the different ways you can operate. So every fireplace comes with a remote, so it's going to tell you how to work that. It's also going to tell you how to operate the manual controls. And every fireplace, every electric does have manual controls. They're likely hidden, which is a good thing, but it will tell you how to run those. There, most of the functions will be controlled from either or but there are some hidden functions that are only controllable on the touchpad and not on the remote, and we'll go through, through those as well. And as the fireplaces develop apps, the, the instructions for the apps are also in the operations section. In this case, I have a touchpad and a remote, so we're going to go through those functions. Right now you're seeing this light, but you're not seeing anything on the display here. So it looks like the fireplace is off, but this fireplace actually has a standby mode. So this is in standby mode, and I know that because these wiggly lights are not going to go off when it's in standby. If I want it completely off, I turn it, my power button off, and it goes completely off. But I want it in standby mode. Standby is what we use here in the showroom overnight. So every electric fireplace can have flames without heat. This fireplace can have heat without flames. So in standby mode in the evening before we leave, we set the temperature to a minimal setting and that will turn the heater on and off to keep us at that temperature overnight so that we don't have as much work to do in the morning to get the showroom up to a temperature that's comfortable for us. So we leave it in standby mode overnight with a minimal temperature setting and the heater will keep running for us overnight. So that is a really great feature in some parts of your home that maybe get cold overnight and you wanna keep a minimal level of heat there in a basement or a guest room or something like that. So that's what standby mode is for. And because there's no visible sign that this is on, that light stays on to let us know and to remind us we're in standby mode. So I'm in standby mode, I come in. If I want to see flames, I'm going to hit the flame button. So now my flames are on. And whatever the last setting was when we turned it off last evening, that's the setting that's going to come back up when I turn it back on the next time. And I can change those settings, obviously. I have temperature settings. So this is how I control the thermostat. So we saw that the uh, heater was already on. If I want to, it's telling me the heater is set to 63 and the room is at 66. So the heater isn't going to come on right now. In order for the heater to come back on, I need to push my thermostat above the room temperature. So the room's at 66, I've pushed it to 67 and it's saying, okay, now I need to get to work and start putting out some heat. And so the heater has turned on, we heard the click. And on a regular, on normal heat function, as the temperature I want gets further away from the temperature we have, the fan is going to modulate and work harder to push out more heat. Right now, we're on eco. The little leaf will turn on eco function, but it was on when we came in, it was on the standby mode. If I push it again, it goes off. So when the eco mode is off and we're in normal setting, the fan will modulate up and down depending on the temperature that it needs to create in order to keep me comfortable according to the thermostat I've set. When I'm on eco, it forces the fan and the heater into a low wattage setting to save energy. And it will not let the fan go above that setting even though it's still working to keep us at temperature, the fan is gonna be limited to how hard it can work. That saves energy, but I also call that TV mode because the fan will not be allowed to push any harder, it won't be able to get any louder, and that's great when I'm watching TV. So it keeps the heater going, but it won't let it modulate, it won't let it get any louder, um, even though the temperature needs to be brought up to the room temperature. 
The other neat setting on the heater on the Ignite is the heat boost function, and that's your lightning bolt. So it's a timed function. It's at the other end of the spectrum from Eco. So on Eco, my wattage is at its lowest setting. On heat boost, it's at the highest setting. So with the most heat and the most fan for a timed setting. So 5, 10, 15, or 20 minutes, when that timer elapses, the, eco, or the heat boost will go off and it will go back to whatever it was doing previously. So if I hit heat boost, I see HB. It comes on for the five minute setting. You can hear it get louder and I can cycle through up to 20 minutes as soon as I hit it again it will go off and it will go back to what it was doing previously. So lots of great settings on the heater and then to adjust my colors I have this paint palette. So the flames on this fireplace do not change color they don't change speed but I can change the colors underneath the flame so in what we call the ember bed. So there are a bunch of preset colors. I can have no color at all, just a very natural, just let the flames do their thing. And then I can scroll through some presets, blues, reds, up to five. And then at six and seven, it will cycle through a, a range of colors. All the colors in the palette will cycle through on either six or seven. If I want to hold it at a particular color, I use that little star button or asterisk if you're used to a keyboard, and it will hold me at that color. And if I turn the fireplace off and back on again, it will still be holding at that color. So that's the asterisk button. Now normally, if I'm not on the color settings six or seven where it's cycling, and that's used as hold, normally that's the brightness button. So let's get our colors back to, I'm going to put it there where we can notice it. Now if I hit that star button, it adjusts the brightness of those lights underneath. And there's a low and a high. You can see L and H, L and H. So that's what the asterisk button or star button is for on all the color settings until you get to six and seven. At six and seven, it's used to hold a particular color and it will no longer function for your brightness. So just keep that in mind. It's not broken, it's just a multi-function button. And last but not least, you see a timer here at the bottom. So that's a sleep timer. So if I'm worried about somebody falling asleep in front of the fireplace or leaving the room and forgetting to turn it off, I can set the sleep timer and it will tell me the timer is engaged and it's going to keep that on to let me know. And the timer can run from half an hour up to eight hours. And that's true for any of the fires that have a timer. And when that time runs out, the fireplace will turn itself off. So if you have kids who are gonna leave the room without turning it off, if you're gonna fall asleep in front of it in your bedroom, the timer's a great feature to just turn it off automatically after the timer has elapsed. So that's my timer button, and if I scroll past eight hours, it'll go out for me. Let's talk about the hidden functions that you can only access on the touchpad and not on your remote control. So right now my temperature is displaying in Fahrenheit. If I prefer Celsius, I hit the temperature up and the temperature down button at the same time. So let's bring that back on. And if I hold those, it will switch over eventually. to Celsius. So sometimes it takes a little bit of pressure and sometimes you're just at the wrong angle, but that's how you switch the temperature display. If I want to lock out the heater, so this would be useful for people with little kiddos who are going to touch everything or in a public area like a lobby where people are going to possibly access the control panel and um, inadvertently turn on the heater in July or something like that. So I can do a heat lockout. So again, back to the touchpad, you take the heat button, the wiggly lines, and the temperature down button, and hold them at the same time. And now I get those dotted lines, and that's the heat lockout. So now if I try to engage the heater, it, instead of giving me a temperature, it's going to tell me, nope, your heater is locked out. 
So that keeps everyone from being able to access the heater. And the fan is working right now to cool down the heater so that because it knows I've locked out the heat function. And that is something to remember on this unit as well. Even after you turn off the heater, you're going to hear the fan going because it has about a two minute cool down cycle. So don't despair that it's not doing what you want it to do. There is a two minute delay while the fan cools down the entire heat system and then you'll hear it go silent. So that's an overview of all of the controls on your Dimplex XLF Ignite. Again, the best place to find detailed instructions is your owner's manual, and you can access those on our website at stylishfireplaces.ca. Any of the fireplace products have an installation tab, and that's where we put the manuals. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see a link for the manual in our description.